One of the assignments that I have my photography students do is to go out into their neighborhood and take a picture of something that most people just take for granted, something that people just pass by and don't really think about. I suppose it's the photography equivalent of stopping and smelling the roses. I really like that assignment because it encourages my students to just slow down. Our pace of life can be really fast and we can often take a lot of things for granted. In the night sky, is one of those things. Believe it or not, I have high school students that don't know that you can see the moon during the daytime. Now what that tells me is that there's just a lot of people out there that don't take the time to go outside, look up, and appreciate the night sky. The Bible, Isaiah 40, 12, tells us that God measures the universe with the span of his hand. Now a span is the distance from your thumb to your pinky finger, and it got me thinking about the size of the universe. Today, we're talking about the immensity of the universe. I'm Mr. Wilson. Welcome to class. We're using a program called Starry Night. What this is, is it's a planetarium application. I can scroll around and I can see uh, all the different stars and planets and everything that's out here. Now, this picture is really irrelevant, so you can kind of ignore the picture. What's important here is that we set our location and our time. So uh, here I am in Southern California, and this is the current date and time. What I'm gonna do is advance the time to nightfall so that we can see all the different stars out here. And as I scroll around to the southern part of the sky, we're going to see a constellation called Orion. Here it is right here. It's very easy to identify with the uh, three stars in a row. This is a wintertime constellation, and if you're watching this video um, during the wintertime in the northern hemisphere, I encourage you to go out there and take a look in the southern sky, and you should see it very clearly. Now, this particular star up here is called Betelgeuse. And the reason that I'm using this particular program is because it allows us to enter what's called spaceship mode. We will be able to blast off from Earth and travel into space to see distant objects. As I hover over this star, you can see I can uh, read information about it. One of the things that it tells me is that this star is 429 light years away. Now, I'm gonna be talking about universal distances in this video, and it's important that you understand what a light year is. A light year is the distance that light can travel in one year. Light is the theoretical speed limit, the fastest that anything can go. So if I shot a laser into space, and I just let that laser beam travel into the vacuum of space for one year, the distance that it would have traveled that's a light year. So this is 429 light years away. So what that means is that the light that left that star has been traveling through space for 429 years, and it has only just now reached my eyes. That's kind of interesting because what it means is that I'm not seeing the star as it appears right now. I'm seeing it as it appeared 429 years ago. So if 429 years ago the star exploded, the light from that explosion would only just now be reaching my eyes. And so when I see it, I would be like, wow, that star just exploded. No, it didn't. It actually exploded 429 years ago. And that's pretty cool because what that means is I'm actually looking back in time, seeing an event that transpired 429 years ago. And if I look deeper into space to see things that are perhaps a million light years away, I'm not seeing that thing as it is right now. I'm seeing it as it was a million years ago. So right there, we're starting to get a feeling for the awe-inspiring nature of the heavens above. The idea that you can see back in time 
with your own eyes. So what we're going to do is we're going to blast off and travel to Beetlejuice. So I'll just right click on this and select the option to go there. Here we go, blasting off from Earth into space. Now one of the things you'll notice is that as we start to travel closer to Betelgeuse, the constellation of Orion is going to get distorted. This is because some of those stars are closer to us than others. So we really get a, a feeling for the three-dimensional nature of space in this program. It's one of the reasons I really like it. Now we also see this strange glow that has appeared around this. What are we looking at? What is all of this? This is our galaxy. We call it the Milky Way. It contains probably, I don't even know, 100, 200 billion stars. And where our star is located about three-fourths of the way out on a spiral arm. And as I look around, I can see what appears to be other stars out here. But in fact, um, most of what I'm seeing out here are other galaxies. And each one of those galaxies may have between 100 and 200 billion stars in them. So what I'm gonna do is I want to get a feel for how big the universe is. So I'm gonna select one of these galaxies at random and we're going to go there. And it may be hundreds of light years away, hundred, it may be millions of light years away. We're going to travel there and then we're going to travel to the next galaxy that we see and we're going to keep doing this for as long as we can, traveling in a relatively straight line to see if we can get to the edge of the universe. Is there even an edge to the universe? We're about to find out. So I'm going to select one of these galaxies at random, right click and tell us to go there. And here our little spaceship will reconfigure itself and travel to that distant galaxy. Each one of these dots you are seeing is not a star, it is a galaxy and each one of those dots has billions, hundreds of billions of stars in it, countless planets. Here we have arrived at this galaxy. This is what we call an irregular galaxy. I'm going to uh, just sort of pick another galaxy kind of behind this one so that we can travel in a relatively straight line from one galaxy to the next, trying to get to the edge of the universe. So here we are, we're traveling past that galaxy on to the next one. Here we have arrived at a spiral galaxy. Our current distance is displayed at the top of the screen. We are 157 million light years from our home star, the sun. So light from this galaxy that leaves today will travel through space and it will take 157 million years to arrive at Earth. I wanna choose this galaxy back here, trying again to, to travel in a relatively straight line out to the edge of the universe, if an edge exists. Here's another galaxy. This one doesn't look too dissimilar from our own, as a matter of fact. Here you can see we have traveled 280 million light years from the sun, but there are still galaxies back here. Let's go ahead and choose this one, go there. We'll go zipping past this galaxy onto our next one. We have now arrived at 399 million light years from the sun. And as I look behind this galaxy, it looks like there's maybe one more little one that's not too far away. Let's go ahead and go there. There we are, 400 million light years from the sun. And as I look behind this galaxy, I really don't see any more little points of light. As I turn around 180 degrees, we can see the universe that we have left behind and all of those little individual points of light are all galaxies, each with 
hundreds of billions of stars in them. Now one of the things that's kind of cool about this as we look back on the universe that we've left behind, we can see that the galaxies have a tendency to cluster together like this. Uh, it's not an even distribution of uh, of galaxies. Um, the, the reason this is happening is because of gravity. As a matter of fact, gravity is what causes the galaxies to form in the first place. So we get uh, stars and the gravity of those stars holds other stars together. And when you get a sufficient number of stars together, we call that a galaxy. And the same thing is happening with the galaxies. The combined mass of all of those billions of stars that form that galaxy creates a pretty strong gravitational pull that attracts other galaxies. And so they all kind of hold themselves uh, within close proximity. And that's why we see this clustering effect. So here, if we turn back around and look at this galaxy that we're sitting next to, and we see the emptiness behind it, what exactly is going on? Let's try and answer that question. Is there an edge to the universe? No one really knows. Uh, I will tell you what the definition of universe means. Una means one. And so what we're talking about here is that by definition, the universe contains everything. The universe is the one thing that contains everything. So if there is an edge to the universe and we ask ourselves what is beyond it, by definition, nothing can be beyond it. If something was beyond it, it would be part of the universe. In fact, we know from measurements that the universe is expanding. So uh, at, let's say this galaxy here that we're looking at, it is uh, moving outward. And as it does, it's moving outward into emptiness. By definition, it has to be moving into uh, void, emptiness, nothingness. And as it moves out, the universe gets bigger. It gets bigger to continue to encompass that galaxy. Now, what's really interesting here is that we have not reached the edge of the universe. We have only reached the limit of this program. So when I looked it up, this particular program has 2 million galaxies in its database. We are currently 400 million light years from the sun, but the estimated diameter of the universe is 93 billion light years. So we are only a small fraction of the way to the actual edge of the universe. Let's find out what that fraction is exactly. So here, if I take my calculator and I take 400 million, this is our current distance from the sun. And I divide that by the estimated diameter of the universe as a whole, 93 billion. That means we have only traveled four tenths of 1% of the distance of the universe. As we turn back around to face the universe that we've left behind, at least the two million galaxies that are in this database, we can try to find our home planet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this uh, find feature. I'm gonna check Earth and I'm going to tell the computer to center Earth in our view. There it is right there. So you can see, I don't know, there, this is an old version of this program and it, it always glitches out when I tell it to do this. And uh, before we could really only see just the galaxies that were the closest to us. But when this little glitch occurs, it kind of lights up all of the galaxies so we can see everything. And it's, it's actually really cool that this glitch exists in the program because it allows us to see more clearly those galactic clusters. You can see how there are some areas of space where uh, there are relatively few galaxies and these large clusters held together gravitationally. And amongst all of these little dots, somewhere among the two million galaxies in this database, is our galaxy with its one to 200 billion stars. And among them is one star we call our sun. And orbiting that sun is our little planet Earth. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, uh, tell the computer to take us back to Earth. And as we travel through space, we will zip by all of these galaxies one by one, and you'll get a feeling for the three-dimensional nature of space as we travel 400 million light years in an instant to get back home. We zip past the sun, zip past the moon, and arrive back on Earth. This is a beaker filled with sand. Would you be very happy if I asked you to count every one of those sand grains in this jar? That's a lot of individual sand grains, and this isn't even that big of a jar. Can you imagine how many sand grains would be on a beach? We just traveled 4 million light years, and we're looking at a database that contains 2 million galaxies. But the actual universe has somewhere between 100 billion and 2 trillion galaxies in it. And each one of those galaxies has between 100 billion and 400 billion stars. So that means the total number of stars in the universe is far greater than the number of sand grains in this jar, far greater than the number of sand grains on a beach. In fact, it is estimated that there are more stars in the universe than there are sand grains on every beach in the world. Now just behind me is a uh, hill. That hill's about a football field away. We traveled 400 million light years and the estimated size of the universe is 95 billion light years in diameter. So let's pretend that the distance from here to that hill is the equivalent of the 400 million light years that we just traveled or one football field. So in order to travel across the entire universe, I'd have to travel 25,000 times further than that hill is away from me. 25,000 football fields on this scale. That should start to put into perspective just how big our universe is. Span of a hand.